So I did mention this to you in person the other day, but it was clearly lukewarm because uh, you've already forgotten it. But uh, I think we're witnessing something very special in Cleveland. Uh, you know, we had one of those hypothetical trades that ends up coming to fruition. And then you think to yourself, you know, this seems like it should work on paper, but how fast will it click or will it click correctly? But the Donovan Mitchell trade is looking phenomenal, right? The Laurie Market and Peace, uh, you know, very situational for that player. So I think, you know, maybe he's found the right situation that he thrives in. But, you know, Donovan was great in Utah and now even better in Cleveland there's an additional defensive effort and, and making up for that section of his game that was always lacking but I think what we're looking at is we're looking at a team that is definitely top three in the east without much contention uh, definitely has the potential to be in the eastern conference finals even has the potential to get to the finals but the hot take here is, is that I think Donovan Mitchell has a legitimate shot at winning the MVP if he can continue this current state of play because you've got a narrative where he went, goes from one team to another and makes that team better, pushes them over the hump. You've got increased stats across the board. You've got kind of historical numbers being set for the franchise of Cleveland. So, you know, he's come in and, you know, started his career at Cleveland with more points than anyone else has. And, you know, there's definitely a narrative element of this is LeBron's franchise technically historically. So if you're doing things that LeBron didn't, that's already quite impressive. But, you know, there's also, it's probably akin to what happened with OKC when KD left. When a like historical player leaves the franchise and they're kind of just treading water, when someone elevates them back into relevancy, that really helps the narrative. So, you know, you've got Donovan Mitchell who shifts teams, basically makes Cleveland a legitimate contender very quickly, but does it by being the number one option on the team. So, yeah, that's the hot take. Or even maybe it's just a lukewarm take. I know that we have players like Luca and Giannis are in contention. Giannis gets voter fatigue. And Luca, I think, is going to have a very incredible statistical season, but the team's record won't be akin to that. And I know that we've had previous years like Jokic getting it when they're the fifth seed or the sixth seed. But I think there's a narrative element, there's a play element, and then there's real potential element, assuming that, you know, he stays healthy. I think uh, I think Donovan Mitchell is definitely in the MVP conversation. Uh, I just pulled up the MVP uh, ladder on NBA.com, and he's ranked fourth at the moment. And you just mentioned two of those players in front of him, Giannis, Luca, Jason Tatum. All right, it's kind of ranked in front of him. I guess your take, you might need to either agree or disagree with this point. If you believe Mitchell's going to win the MVP, and obviously, you know, he could, are you saying the Cavs will have a better record than the Bucks and the Celtics? I would say yes, because you have a youth element and you've got those other two teams that probably understand a little bit about playoff experience and don't feel the necessity to burn themselves out in the regular season for wins. I think Cleveland legitimately could win 60 games a season because of that youthful element, right? And, you know, you've seen it with Garland being out. They can still win without a starter, whereas the Bucks are currently on a little bit of a slide because they've had couple of players out there's some teams that are built you know for sustained success and then there's some teams that can't really take the hit without it memphis is a good comparison young team if one person's out the rest of the guys are very happy to step up and they have the energy to do so whereas i think boston and milwaukee probably have that long picture a little bit more of it is not worth burning out on a, on a saturday night in sacramento to get an extra win it's okay just to rest it's okay just to take the game as it comes and see what happens so do you, are you I, mean, I guess I'll, I'll put forth the other question here you had Luca picked as MVP are you changing your pick now as Donovan Mitchell will win MVP or is this just Donovan Mitchell could win MVP um the hardest part with Luca is going to be he's probably going to have a Jokic like season where he does some things statistically or historically that's never been done so you know, I think currently he's got a PER of 36, uh, true shooting percentage of like 60%. So, you know, he's got some incredible stats and we all understand and recognize that his role on that team is to have the ball like 75% of the time and do everything. And he's still quite unstoppable. But to me, the record is going to be the really big indicator of that. So let's assume the way that I caveat here is Cleveland wins 60 games and Luca's Mavs win 40. 
I think that's enough of a divide to prevent Luca from getting the MVP. But if we get in the 45 wins for the Mavs, 55 for the Cavs, now the narrative starts to shift. I think you need, I think it needs to be almost a 15 game win difference between the Cavs and the Mavs for Luca to not win it, if that makes sense. It makes sense. You've got some very specific parameters there, though. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I wouldn't bet, I wouldn't bet. Uh, if I could place a very specific multi uh, or parlay for this, then then that's how I play it. 